Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're uh, putting more solar on more RVs. It just doesn't stop. Uh, today, I wanna talk about putting 800 watts onto a outdoors RV. I wanna say it's, uh, it's, I think it's pretty sure it's less than 30 feet, more than 20 feet, somewhere in there. Uh, it's probably in the description. It's probably why you clicked on this video or part of the reason why. Uh, I wanna talk about why we chose the panels we chose, why we chose the configuration we chose, and how we all hooked it up and how it ends up uh, working in the system. Now, the other thing I wanna mention is uh, this system is one that uh, a previous owner had already put together, so it does have a Victron inverter and a couple other components, so we're gonna be tapping into that, which is a little bit challenging because it's not necessarily the way we do it. And one of the things I talked with a customer about was, uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, I don't see anything in there, and you'll see it later, that is wrong, it's just different, and that's okay. So, uh, let's talk about the panels here. Uh, we're putting four panels on here for 800 watts. Just finished up screwing them down. They're all wired up. Everything's good to go there. Um, <clears throat> and what I ended up doing was, believe it or not, we put them all in parallel. Okay, and uh, we do have some smaller wires here than what you might see for doing a parallel system. But uh, there is a method to our madness that we have. Uh, these are uh, what Rich Solar calls the 24 volt panel. And I wish more people understood what that actually means. Uh, sometimes you think, well, 24 volt panel, you should use that for a 24 volt system. No, that's not the case. All that has to do with is the voltage they run at. And to confuse you even more, <laughs> on a 24 volt panel, guess what the voltage is? It's about 45 volts. Anywhere from 45 to 35 is where it ends up running. And that's why we can run them all in parallel. And we'll talk about why we're doing that. Uh, but we end up maxing out somewhere around 20 amps uh, of flowing through the, uh, the wires here. So that's plenty good for 10 gauge wire. So we can get away with using just one of those ports there without a problem. Uh, why are we doing them in parallel? Well, the issue is uh, this is a curved roof, as you can tell. So if I put both of these in series, well, now I've got different conditions. The sun is, this one's producing more power than that one. So what's gonna end up happening is the charger is gonna optimize for this panel, not this panel. So we're gonna end up getting less overall. And likewise, well, I could put that panel and that panel together, but my concern there is, well, they're awfully far away. That one could be under shade and this one could be in full sun. And now we're gonna get less than what you would otherwise. Same thing here. So. The only thing I could think of was run them all in parallel and suffer a little bit of the voltage drop loss that we're gonna get. It's not much because we're running again at 40 to 35 volts. Uh, it's gonna cook pretty efficiently. The other thing to talk about real quick, you know, when I mentioned uh, we're gonna be about 20 amps, you might be like, well, I don't want only 20 amps into my battery. No, don't stress about that. So you might get concerned about, well, 800 watts, 20 amps. I, I don't want 20 amps into my battery. I want more. I want more amps. No, no, no. On the solar side, you want less amps. It's all about your power, okay? If you're ever concerned or confused about how is that possible, look at your shore power cord. It's typically, uh, you're, you're typically not pulling more than 30, 50 amps, and you can run everything, right? Uh, it's all about voltage. You, you take volts times amps, that gives you watts. Watts is what we're after. So don't stress about that. The charge controller converts the higher voltage, lower amps power into a lower voltage, higher amp power for your batteries. Let the charger do its job. Give it as much voltage as it will accept. Yeah, we got a, we got a wild uh, JD here. Uh -oh. Not only do we do good solar work in my humble opinion, but we'll install a soft start for you. And uh, the air conditioner is running, so we must have done something right. Yeah. Or JD did in this case. Working good. All you gotta do is follow the direction. That's it. First, first step is finding them and reading them though. So, all right, this is all taken care of. Um, what I'd like to do is then uh, go down below and show you every, all the work we did there and uh, some of the previous work, kind of a little system review. All right, so we're in the bed, back bedroom here and uh, behind this cabinet above the bed, there's an access hole up there. And that's where you'll find these sets of wires. You got a black and blue and a white and red. Uh, the, here's where we did the splice. And basically we just connect these straight together. But you don't want to do this until you unhook it down below and I'll show you where to do that. Uh, 
Normally you put a charge controller right in there, but we didn't want to do that because we wanted to do a controller like that. So what we had to do was run the wires from here all the way down there to the compartment where they come out and then run that into here. Now the previous, uh, previous owner, previous customer, well it wasn't a customer, previous owner, let's go with that. Uh, they had actually run some wiring back behind here into a hole and that made it out into the front tongue area. There's also a hole like that down here somewhere. Yeah, there it is. I think, yes. And, uh, oh, no, the hole's right here. That's where everything was run. So we were, at first I was thinking I was gonna have to run through there. That would have been a pain, but we ended up going through there. It wasn't too bad. And what we ended up doing was actually taking the negative from the alternator charging system that the person had hooked up, and we pulled that wire through with the solar wire attached to it, and then uh, pulled some extra through, and then pulled the alternator cable right back through. So we kind of used the existing cable as a pull wire, or pull string, that worked out really well. That was JD's idea. Uh, the other things we did in here was we added a VE bus smart dongle. That's nice to see what's going on with the system. It's a nice uh, diagnostic tool. And of course we added the 150 by 70 charge controller and a breaker so the customer can turn off the solar and it protects everything nicely. Uh, we also have a DC breaker there. So that system is protected. The initial plan was to actually put a Lynx distributor in here, but as you can tell, there's a lot going on and it's all done very well, to be honest. <laughs> Not that I have any reason to think it wouldn't be done well, but um, I don't think we'd be improving the situation much other than redoing things for redoing sake. And it doesn't make sense to do that in my humble opinion. So we leveraged what was there, tied into it. Uh, we got a nice big class T fuse there, um, good switches. Um, you know, we don't use these quite so much anymore because we were finding in some instances they were still burning up. Uh, I feel like if you're running an air conditioner for four or five hours at a time. Uh, but with the amount of battery that this customer has, they were likely not going to be doing that. Uh, maybe, you know, two, three hours if you got good sun. Maybe longer is the most you're probably going to get out of it. <sighs> Customers using these uh, Lion Energy Safari batteries. These were really hot a couple of years ago. We don't see them nearly as much anymore, and I'll tell you why. Uh, biggest reason is probably just they're not efficient on space. You can get so much more storage capacity there we go. In about the same footprint, I would say today, I could probably fit easily six to 800 amp hours of battery in the same footprint where we've got 420. So that's probably why we're not seeing the Lion Energies used quite as much. However, still a darn good battery. All right, so under the tongue here, or under the tongue area, there's an access panel here. And this is where we made that connection. You can see uh, some of our splice up here. So there's a white and red, and we just connected that to the black and red of the solar. And something to hopefully don't get too confused by, there is a grounding uh, bolt here. And initially I thought, uh, well, the, the white wire coming out of here, this one, that well it was connected to that bolt but i thought it went to the grounding bus bar up there uh and then let's see if we can zoom in here so right there is where that breaker is where you disconnect for the solar input that's where the solar wire comes from the roof into this area so you disconnect it there and that's what we end up tying together we had a lot of fun working on this outdoors RV, solar upgrade. Uh, if you want a little upgrade or you want a big upgrade, check us out at sotasolar.com, S-O-T-A-S-O-L-A-R.com. If you got comments, questions, leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, I don't know what else. Stay charged out there. Have fun.